Hey, what's going on guys? Stefano Lombardo here back with another video. And last week I asked you guys to send me your photography questions on Instagram and TikTok. We're going to be going over a few of them right now. So our first question is from Matt. He asked, what's the best way to do portrait photo shoots when in manual? Cause I always use scene or even automatic. Whether I'm shooting landscapes or portraits, I find myself always shooting in manual. I know a ton of photographers love to shoot in aperture priority mode when they're shooting portraits, but it's all subjective and whatever's best for you. But I shoot in manual, so I'll explain exactly how I do it. First things first, I set my ISO to 100. This will ensure I don't get any unwanted grain or noise in my shot. Next, I set my aperture to 1.6 to 2 or even 2.8, depending on the amount of bokeh I want in the background. Next, I use my shutter speed to expose my shot properly. Keep in mind that the portraits I do are usually outside in natural lighting, so I can use these settings. Where these settings won't work is when you're in a dark situation and you can't use your shutter speed to expose your shot properly. If you do use your shutter speed to expose your shot properly in a dark area, you're going to get some motion blur when your subject moves, and that's not what you want. And this is just because when you're lowering your aperture, your sensor is exposed to light for a longer period of time. If you do find yourself shooting in low light, I would highly suggest investing in a fast lens that will allow more light in. Or you can raise your ISO. The problem with raising your ISO, you will introduce more grain into your shot. But if you want to simplify that entire process, I would highly suggest you shoot in aperture priority mode. This is a mode with the AV or the A on your camera's mode selector. And what this will allow you to do is set your aperture manually to whatever you would like, and then it will automatically set your shutter speed to expose your shot properly. It's super easy to use. I would highly suggest it, and I hope that helps. Question number two, Photoshop, I need help. It's all overwhelming, and I just continue to lean on Lightroom. Personally, I don't think leaning on Lightroom is a bad thing. I know a lot of photographers that just use Lightroom and nothing else, and all the edits they do is just on Lightroom. I would highly suggest searching through YouTube, learning how to use Photoshop, because there are thousands and thousands of videos of literally anything you're looking for that you want to do in Photoshop. If you want to see some awesome new features of Photoshop 2021 and how to use them, I made a video right here. Question number three is what are your thoughts on putting your name on photos? I see some photographers do and some don't. As a photographer, I don't add my name or any type of watermark to any of my photos. And here's why. For one, I think it ruins the entire photo. I can't count how many times I saw a beautiful photo on Instagram and then in the corner or even right in the middle of the photo, I see someone's name or a watermark. I think, I don't know, something about it ruins the entire photo. One of the common reasons why people put their name on their photos is because they're afraid someone's gonna screenshot it or save it, post it up as if it was their own and then not give them credit, basically ripping off the photo. But guys, Photoshop exists. You can remove something like a name in Photoshop in under two seconds. I'm serious. So for me personally, I don't think it's necessary. I also don't think it looks good and that's why I don't do it. The next question is I'm looking for an affordable full frame camera. Any thoughts? If you're looking for an affordable full frame camera, I would highly suggest picking up the Canon EOS RP. Now I personally don't own this camera, but I have friends that do and I've heard great things about it. This is a budget full frame mirrorless camera with amazing specs and you can pick it up for about a thousand USD. Depending on your budget though, I would highly suggest picking up the EOS R. This is a camera that I've been shooting with for over a year now. I absolutely love it and I swear by it. The EOS R is a full frame mirrorless beast with amazing specs. I have a lot of friends that own it as well and they absolutely love it. Note that the EOS R is about a thousand dollars more than the RP, but if you have the budget for it, I would go for it. Keep in mind that these prices that I have listed are just the body only and they don't include any of the lenses. I've been loving photography and video videography of vineyards and wine. I have an 18 to 55. What do you recommend I do to make my videos pop? To make your videos pop, I would suggest three things. Number one, I would suggest using a gimbal if you don't already. A gimbal is going to allow you to get super smooth cinematic footage. Now, I don't know what type of videos you're making, but let's just say you're walking through this vineyard with a camera without a gimbal. That footage is going to be shaky whether you like it or not. But if you're using a gimbal, you can run through that vineyard and your footage will be smooth. The second tip is shoot and log if your camera has it. When you shoot and log, your footage is going to look like garbage, but it's there to preserve the highlights and shadows of your footage. It's also there to give you the ability to color grade your footage and make your footage look amazing. Right now, I've been shooting this entire video in log, so I'll show you how that log footage looks before I color grade it and edit it. 
This is the log footage. You can tell that it's gray, desaturated, it looks like garbage. And this is after it's color graded and edited. And the third tip is to get different angles. One thing I think would be cool is that if you invested in a drone, you can get some different angles flying over the vineyards and getting top down drone shots. The next question we got is what website or program do you use to deliver your galleries? To deliver galleries to clients, I use a website called Pixie Set. I've used other websites as well as Google Drive to deliver galleries to clients, but Pixie Set makes it so much easier for both you and the client. And no, this is not sponsored by Pixie Set, but if they do want to sponsor me, hit me up. Something to keep in mind when sending your photos to your clients is quality. And a lot of these programs or other websites actually compress your photos before sending them to the client, where I found Pixie Set actually doesn't. Pixie Set allows you to upload the full file size, and then your client can choose whatever size they want when they download the photo. You can fully customize your Pixie Set gallery. It's a great experience for your clients, and they can actually order prints from that photo shoot directly from Pixie Set. Next question. How do you do long exposures when it's still light out or without an ND filter? If you're looking to shoot long exposures during the day, there's really only two ways of doing it. That's using an ND filter or cranking up your aperture to something like F16 to expose your shot properly. The bad way of doing this is cranking up your aperture very high because then you don't have control of your aperture anymore. So if you're looking for depth of field, you won't be able to achieve it. So if you're looking to take a long exposure at a certain aperture like 2.8, it can happen. The best way to do it is using an ND filter. That way you still have full control over your camera settings. I hope that helps. Next question is how to take clean, clear photos of moving people, cars, etc. By clean, clear photos, I assume you mean that motion blur that you get when you're taking photos of moving vehicles or things like that. The key to achieve this is by adjusting your shutter speed. What shutter speed is, is the length of time your sensor is exposed to light. Have you ever seen those photos of silky smooth waterfalls or night photos of vehicle light trails? That is done with shutter speed. For example, if you're shooting at a very low shutter speed and you're taking photos of a car moving at 100 kilometers an hour, your shutter is going to be exposed for longer, making it a very blurry photo. It's not going to be clear or sharp at all. To fix this, you want to crank that shutter speed to a high number to freeze your subject in action, whether that be a model or a photo of a car. The next question I got is, I would love to get started with photography and videography. What's the best camera to start with? One of the best cameras I always suggest to beginner photographers who are on a budget is the Canon M50. The Canon M50 is a mirrorless camera. It's lightweight, has eye detection autofocus, can work with all EF lenses if you get the EF adapter, and it has a bunch of awesome specs. The ability to shoot raw, focus peaking, 24 megapixels, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi connectivity, the list goes on. Right now I'm shooting with the EOS R, but the camera I had before the EOS R was the M50 and I absolutely loved it. I had the 22 mil EFM lens on it, as well as a 50 mil, the nifty 50 with the EF adapter and my 24 to 70 L series lens on it. You can pick up the M50 for about $600. I've been uninspired for a month. I see all other photographers posting three times a week and I feel bad. As a creator, I find myself in a creative block all the time. These blocks make it hard for me to create content, post content, or even think creatively. Don't feel bad or look down on yourself because it happens to all of us. And these creators that you see post three times a week, they can be going through the exact same thing and just posting videos or photos that they made previously. When I'm uninspired, I found that editing old photos triggers me to go out and create again. So I would suggest find something that helps you get out of a creative block. Okay, so the next question I got is how do I make the sky blue? I seem to overexpose and blow it out. Help. If you find yourself overexposing your sky, I would highly suggest shooting in RAW if you don't already. What RAW will allow you to do is underexpose your shot by a ton. That way your sky is not overexposed and then you can always adjust your foreground in post-processing. Depending on what you're shooting, you can always take two exposures, one for the sky and one for the foreground, and then merge them in Photoshop. But if you still find yourself with a blown out sky, I'd highly suggest using Photoshop's new sky replacement feature that I made a video on right here. For the next question, it's Nikon D3400. Can you make money and how? Because I just bought it. If you want to make money with photography, I don't think you can just buy a camera and start making money right away. You need to learn how to use your camera, learn how to edit, learn what lens is, learn what gear you need to get before you get started. You got to think that photographers spend tens of thousands of dollars to make money with photography as a career. And photographers spend a lot of time doing free work when they're just starting out so they can build their portfolio. Again, I would learn everything about your camera, learn exactly what lenses you need to get for the photography you want to do, 
learn how to edit. There's so much stuff you need to do before starting to make money with it. If that helped you or you have questions, leave a comment down below. And if you guys enjoyed that video and you want to see more content like this, click that like button, click that subscribe button, and make sure you click that notification button to be notified when I post a new video. Peace.